Hello everybody, my name is Tom and I'm going to talk to you right now about Formula 1 Fantasy and how I think you can improve. I'm going to give my top tips on how I approach the game um, just to give you a little bit of background on me very briefly because I don't want to bore you um, I've played a lot of fantasy football in recent years uh, last season I finished just outside the top 1000 on the official FPL game um, two points off the top 1000 so had a really good season last year, and this this season on Formula One, I am I'm currently ranked 1.6k out of a million. So again, a very good rank at the moment with five races left in the season. Um, I just want to talk to you really about my approach to Formula Fantasy One. Formally, I can't even say the word. <laughs> Who's going to listen to me? Uh, my approach to Formula One Fantasy. Okay, let's get stuck into it. So if you check out the graphic, I've got quite a long a long list of things to to look at when you're planning your team for a given weekend. Um, my focus mainly is going to be on the last couple of races, USA and um, Turkey, as of the time of recording this. Um, and yeah, so that, like I said, there's a lot of stuff to take into account when picking your team, uh, some more important than others, and overall I think it's just about linking as many of these factors together and then squeezing in as many of the drivers that meet certain criteria into your team as much as your budget will allow. Um, so let's just go through some of the some of the categories of what I look at for my team. So first things first is free practice one, two, um, and to some extent free practice three, but I think free practice one and two are really important. Um, they give a really good indication um, of how who the quickest quickest teams are, who's likely to do well in qualifying, there's a lot of um, qualifying sort of testing in free practice one and two and free practice three is more sort of uh, the long runs I would say um, and I don't know you sometimes get some random um, random teams that kind of look like they're doing really well in free practice three like as as a random <laughs> random I need to stop using that word as an example um, Aston Martin in Monza did not perform very well in free practice one and two uh, but then free practice three, they were like really, really well, like well tuned up, and they looked like really strong all of a sudden. Um, and that actually was a pitfall for me. I was like, oh yeah, Aston Martin, they look really good all of a sudden. I'll put them in my team, and yeah, it turns out they they really didn't do very well at all on Monza, uh, Monza. So that was um, a slip up by me. Um, but that's just that's just one example. But in general, free practice one and two give a really good indication. Uh, of how teams are approaching the weekend, if they've had any problems. Obviously, if uh, someone has a big crash and there's damage to the car, that could also impact um, whether you want them in their team or not. You know, can they? Especially in free practice three, if someone has a big crash, they've got qualifying on the same day. Then, um, do you really want them uh, in your team? Probably not. It's quite high risk. There's a possibility that they might not even race, etc., um, etc. Et um, so yeah, practice definitely important. Uh, the history of the track also important. Um, just in terms of Turkey, um, I had a look um, when picking my team who had done well there in the past and the biggest winners in recent history were Ferrari with three wins and also Mercedes with four wins. So straight away I'm looking at Mercedes and Ferrari thinking they've got a good track record, excuse the pun. Um, I suppose it's not really a pun, it's just an actual literal explanation of what it is. <laughs> they have a track record of doing well at that track. So yeah, they were on my radar big time, Mercedes and Ferrari. Um, form also uh, kind of a factor to a lesser extent I would say um, there's certain you know certain drivers go um, through good and bad patches of form uh, going into Turkey Ricardo was a driver that was on really good form he obviously recently won Monza um, and just was in good form and McLaren as well were on a on a bit of a streak <coughs> um, but uh, Ricardo's performance in free practice one, two, and three was just really poor the whole way through. He didn't look good. He looked like he was Ricardo of earlier on in the season. So even though I could have got some points if he'd um, completed his streak, I chose not to go for him just because he looked really weak. And as it turned out, he was actually he had a really bad race. Barely overtook anyone and started really near the back and finished nowhere near the points, uh, as far as I remember. Um, another person who's in good form throughout the season is Gasly. Gasly's been in really good form, so and he looked really strong in practice. Um, so that's one of the reasons I went for Gasly uh, for the Turkey weekend. Um, <clears throat> he did end up having a good race. However, I took him out of my team for the USA weekend just because 
Um, even though again he's been in good form, he's had some he's had some misfortune this season, and also the Alpha Tori just didn't look very strong going into USA, so he got he got booted out of my team, <laughs> thankfully because he actually didn't he DNF'd the race, so I'm pretty glad I got rid of him. Um, so yeah, form is kind of something I look at, but not overly important, I would say. Something that is overly important, very important, is how the drivers and the teams actually talk um, throughout the the weekend uh, leading into qualifying. Um, so I've got some examples which I will expertly put on screen for you to read. Um, so uh, just a second, I'll get to them. Um, so again, using Turkey as an example, um, <clears throat> um, Red Bull um, was saying, or Max was saying, sorry, from Red Bull, uh, direct quote here, uh, we're, look, we're still looking for improvements as we didn't have a lot of data on these cars for this track, uh, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully we can make some improvements as we have some challenges. Obviously that's quite negative kind of talk. He's trying to put a positive spin on it, saying hopefully we can make improvements. Uh, we have some challenges. Um, we're looking for improvements. Yeah, there's, he's trying to seek the positives, but the fact that he's trying to seek the positives gives the indication that Red Bull didn't look particularly strong in Turkey. Uh, Perez also backed this up by saying Mercedes looks strong here. I mean, that's their main rivals, and he's talking up his main rivals, so um, pretty clear what he thinks there. And then also talking to the main rivals, Bottas himself said the car was feeling pretty good. It feels like it could be a strong weekend for us. Again, pretty clear signal, really positive language here from Bottas. Um, the drivers are generally pretty honest about um, these sort of things, so um, important to pay attention to. And then lastly here, Leclerc, uh, Leclerc a quote from Leclerc. Uh, the car felt really good today, and I really enjoyed driving blah 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 things are looking positive again more positive talk from the Ferrari driver which backs up well, both, all these quotes back up um, what I was looking at the history in terms of history of Ferrari and Mercedes um, and at this current weekend Bottas and Leclerc from Ferrari and Mercedes were talking very positively about their car so it made me really interested in getting um, Ferrari and Mercedes packed into my team for that weekend um, moving on uh, where are we? Um, suitability of the car to the track. So certain cars are uh, better suited to certain tracks. It's clear um, this season that, for example, the McLaren is really fast in a straight line. So something like Mon um, Monza, which as it proved to be an outstanding race for McLaren, um, probably helped slightly by Max and Lewis smashing into each other on turn one. Um, but yeah, McLaren ended up finishing first and second. Um, just goes to show that McLaren is super fast in a straight line because Monza is all about straight line speed. Um, and then, in contrast to that, the Ferraris have been pretty strong in the slower sort of corners. Um, so tracks like Monaco, um, Hungary, um, those sort of tracks, whereas less less of the straights and more sort of tight, twisty corners. Uh, Ferrari looked really strong that season. So you got to look at the, the track that they're actually going to be racing on and see if it's suited to the to the car. That's another important factor for picking your team. Um, streaks, I mentioned briefly earlier, so you get streaks for like if um, you get constructor streaks, if you're, um, so say you've got Mercedes as your constructors, if both Mercedes cars like qualify, I can't actually remember what the, what the streak is off the top of my head, I think it's like um, if they qualify five races in a row and, and like the top ten you get some points etc etc or the driver streaks if the, a driver for example finishes in the top ten for five races in a row then you get an extra bonus ten points that sort of thing so um, when it gets to when a driver's on a streak basically that means they finish for example going into United States um, Norris, Perez and Sainz were all on streaks um, so again um, if they look strong and with the other categories then I'd be looking strongly to, to get them in my team Norris is already in my team um, he has been all season because he's a bargain um, but yeah Norris, Perez and Sainz um, if, as long as they finish in the top 10 for the USA you get like an extra 10 points per driver so that's like that's um, <clears throat> a really nice bonus to look out for um, grid penalties can also affect who I pick you might think if someone's got a grid penalty and they start at the back of the track, actually, you know, you don't want them. But if they're if they're a strong a strong driver, for example, Max Verstappen when he started at the back of Russia, he's he's obviously not going to stay at the back throughout the race. He's going to make up places, and you get fantasy points for each position you make up up to a maximum of ten points. 
Um, so he ended up finishing second. So he obviously made a massive, a massive jump. Got uh, the maximum of ten points for all the positions he climbed up. Um, finished. Obviously, that was affected by the rain right at the end of the race. But even before the rain, he was like sixth or seventh position. So loads of points um, for the strong drivers that take grid penalties. Um, so don't be put off by picking a strong driver if they've got a grid penalty. Again, another example of that recently in Turkey was Signs. <coughs> Signs had a grid penalty and started at the back of the grid. However, he, again, because he's in a Ferrari, he's going to overtake the Hasses, he's going to overtake the Williams and the Alfa Romeos, he's going to get all those points for that. And again, he himself also finished in the points, so he got quite a lot of points uh, for the Turkey weekend, despite finishing, uh, despite starting 20th on the grid. Um, <clears throat> picking the better driver, I say better because it's kind of subjective, but picking the better driver from the team, so, you know, drivers tend to have the number one driver, so Hamilton would be the number one driver over Bottas, Max Verstappen, number one driver, Leclerc, number one driver, that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, so if you pick the number one driver, uh, or whoever you think is stronger at the time, um, they get points for beating their teammates, so you get points for out-qualifying your teammate, you get points for finishing higher in the race than your teammate. Um, there's lots of uh, different factors for that, so picking the stronger driver of the team um, means you're going to just accrue more points as the season, season goes on. Um, and I think fantasy, Formula 1 fantasy in particular, is about those marginal gains each weekend. Um, whereas fantasy uh, like football, fantasy Premier League, is much more <coughs> high variance, I would say. Because obviously there's a lot more different players to choose from, and um, you get uh, you can get like a huge spike of points <clears throat> which you can also in Formula Fan uh, I can't say this Fantasy Formula 1 um, but it's more about those the nitty gritty points that you accrue over the season that's really going to bump you up the standings um, price changes another factor so price changes um, you want to try and watch out for who's going to increase from price you can see the little green and red bar which tells you the likelihood of their price increasing um, so getting a crew in, you you do that kind of naturally just by picking the good drivers because then naturally, yeah, if you do your research beforehand, the drivers perform well. Everyone then all of a sudden wants to jump on them and get them in their team, which naturally forces the um, the price up. So just by following all these other criteria, you'll naturally sort of grow your your budget, and then you'll be able to afford um, better race drivers. Because obviously at the start of the season, you start with a hundred million. Um, you, you start with a hundred million uh, dollars or whatever it is and then you grow your budget uh, so now my budget's like 106 or something million so that gives me an extra six million to afford that's like an entire driver like that's almost as as much as George Russell is worth in the game um, <clears throat> so it really does help you to afford the better drivers and it's all about getting the maximizing the best drivers in this game you're not going to get a, a host of points for, <clears throat> for getting like a couple of Alpha Tori drivers, uh, Alpha Romeo drivers, and some Haas drivers. That's not where the points are. The main bulk of points amongst the best uh, constructors. So obviously Red Bull, Mercedes, Ferrari, McLaren, um, <coughs> and some of the, some of the other midfield. Um, but you want to try and maximise the the big teams. Um, also using your chips appropriately, uh, wildcarding at the right time to improve your price changes. Wildcarding um, lets you make up to 12 substitutions in a week so you can just keep hopping on and hopping off people to grow your budget so if you see someone's going to go up in price just just buy them um, their price goes up then you can sell them for the next person that's going to go up and keep hopping around until it gets to the weekend and you want to pick your actual team so yeah wild card is important mega driver also important um, probably wise to use the sprint races to choose your to pick your mega driver because you get extra points in fantasy for um, <clears throat> for the sprint races so as an example if you want to mega driver uh, Bottas back in Monza you would have been absolutely laughing because he qualified on pole he then won the sprint race he took a grid penalty started in 20th and then made up a load of places from 20th and finished I think third in the end if I'm not mistaken so he got an absolute chunk of points on in Monza and that was really uh, boosted by the fact that he um we had the sprint race um, <clears throat> and also use the mega driver wisely only choose um, to use it really when you think that the driver in, that you're going to put it on is going to have a really strong weekend when you can be right pretty much convinced they'll have a strong weekend 
So my two Mega Drivers I used this year were both Max Verstappen. The first one was a small disaster, not entirely, but I used Max Verstappen at Silverstone, which he obviously crashed out of on Turn 1 after crashing with Hamilton. Um, but he's, because, again, because of the sprint race, I used it when he had the sprint race. He he, um, he won the sprint race and qualified, I think, second in the actual qualifying on the Friday. So I got quite a lot of points from that. And so even though he crashed out of the race, I still got quite a lot of um, points as uh, as a mega driver. And then I also used Max Verstappen as mega driver in Zandvoort. Even though it wasn't a sprint race, I was super, super confident that, uh, barring any crazy incidents, Max was going to win. Um, you know, Red Bull looked strong on the track, and Max was on his home race. Um, he had so much support there. I feel I felt like he was going to be so pumped for the race that he, it's an absolute no-brainer to mega drive him. And sure enough, he finished on he he qualified on pole and went on to win the race. So I got a nice um, hat full of points for that. Um, and then lastly, on on the turbo driver uh, mega driver thing is um, the weather. Um, <clears throat> Um, if it's looking like it's going to pour with rain, I would advise against using the Mega Driver just because uh, the rain makes things so unpredictable. And you want to, you want the whole point of fantasy is that you're able to predict what's going to happen. You want to predict what's going to happen, and the rain makes it so unpredictable, it's not worth the risk. Um, as proven in like um, Spa, for example, where the whole race got called off. If you use your Mega Driver in that race, um, you only got half points for everything, which kind of sucks. Um, anyway, um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, uh, pretty much it, with the exception of, oh, I, I talked about the Mega Driver, I didn't actually talk about the Turbo Driver. The Turbo Driver is also an incredibly important uh, chip, if you want to call it that, um, each and every weekend, because obviously you have a Turbo Driver every weekend, you and the Mega Driver you only pick twice in the entire season. <clears throat> so the Turbo Driver is really important, because it's whoever is under 20 million budget, you can double their points for the weekend. So you want to maximize uh, that as much as possible. Most recently, I've brought Perez back into my team because it looked like he was picking up on form. And sure enough, Turkey and also America, he's finished on the podium both times. So without maximizing who you think um, is going to be the best under 20 million dollar um, driver for your team for that weekend. Um, so yeah, make sure you choose wisely for that. And I think that's pretty much it, really. Um, if if I think I've covered everything, <laughs> that's what that's. These are what I use to to maximise my my points potential. <clears throat> it's all about taking it, doing your research, doing lots of research, and <clears throat> trying to predict what's going to happen, really. And like I said, at the moment I'm one point six k. I'm just about eighty points off the top two hundred and fifty which is pretty pretty crazy. I'm hoping I can break into the top 1000 in the next for the next race which is in Mexico. Um so yeah, uh, thanks very much everyone for listening. I hope I haven't whistled on for too long. This video is almost like 20 minutes, so sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, I've got a lot to talk about because there's a lot to a lot to take in when you're doing fantasy games. But anyway, thanks very much for watching and see you later.